BTC testing the daily range. Got a wick, I mean, wick right to the bottom of it. But there's nothing to see here. This chart's just random lines. It's really not, guys. I mean, literally, if you're looking at this for the first time, second time, whatever, and you're confused on it, man, stick with us. Stick with it. There's a lot of information on this chart, the way I have this set up. And once you start to understand these volatility ranges and these distribution levels, dude, your whole outlook on trading is going to change, I promise. You're going to start to realize that all the information you've been looking at for the, all these years, it's all lagging. There's nothing to it. It's just dragging you into the muck. Five day, three day, two day, daily. BTC's data sets above, the, above both of these reverse mean of log returns. There's the five day, three day, two day. Two day is right above it. And of course, the daily that just came down and tested it when, what time? Yeah, I mean, hell, whoops, it's not BTC. It's that little spy creature. There's the wick right there earlier. Hell, just 45 minutes ago, right to the daily range for support level. I got to get rid of these dogs. These wild asses. Go. Come on. Come on. Everybody go out. Let's go. Party time. One out, Max? No? Go hang with your dad. Okay, buddy. All right. Got rid of the wild, the two wild ones. Uh, let's see here. Middle of the monthly range. Boom right here so I, like like i said man this this monthly range these this weekly range that i'll tell you what man btc is pretty it's down around 19 19 three they're magnets for price action man if you know they're you got these teams out there the bulls and the bears right or at least they think they're on the team um if, if they do not if you don't take control of the buying or the selling, man, it will, it'll revert right back. I mean, you uh, price action wise, you can almost think of them as like means, man. I mean, not, not, they're not, but it's where all the volatility is and the volatility will suck that data set right back into it. All right. I mean, we, ju we juked above it. Bulls gave up, man. Right back to the center of the, the monthly range where we were. What Monday? What the hell? Let me see what fucking day is this. God, that weekly's down there. Or was it Tuesday? Yeah, it was Tuesday. So very interesting what's going to happen today. PTC's looking. Tuesday with the, with the nice pump. I mean, month, you know, Sunday also was a good pump. Right. But uh, Tuesday. Tuesday was delicious. So was Wednesday. Yeah. Delicious. Wow. It was eating volatility. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, old Apple. Even today on the daily so far, like the plus one above has just been a perfect target up, and then the down below, like you said earlier, the you know, it's been nailing like the targets it hit like uh literally the the downward uh prop projection boss from the eighth or so of the month, the reversal candle on the eighth. Oh. Yeah, it's just like yeah, like on a downward uh on a downward drift first. First uh, Laplace deviation above. It's just been 
Wonderful. And also that's right below the normal deviation from the recent pump on the what like the twenty second or something like that. First the plot first uh, normal up. So I mean it's <laughs> playing that range perfectly well right now. Let's see where it goes from here for the day though. It'll be fun. Right before the open here. Got a little yep. part look got a little S and P mini fucking part, part, party candle. Yeah. Almost right. did, almost did a ninety nine seven and a ninety five four. Upside and, and down before the stream, right? It hit that, it hit that third third RMLR down and bounced right back up, right? Quick little on the Bitcoin stuff as well. Wow, look at the thirty-three minute candle. Yep, let's see that thing. There now, thirty-three minutes per ninety-nine. Yeah. Right down to the ninety-five four, pull right back up, close right at the sixty-eight three, right at the powerful, impressive. Clear outs. Clear them out, boys. Oh, this is the 15 minutes. Beautiful. 37 seconds. Damn. That was actually. Wait a minute. 38 29, 37 80. Oh, yeah. That ruffled some of these feathers. Right. You know, someone got jacked up right there. One point two five percent move on a fifteen minute candle. Let's see, it's just off one fifteen. God, was it a nine? There we go. God, yeah. there's the nine minute. Pretty much a nine minute. That it was a six minute. Was it a three minute? Wow, that happened in three minutes, man. Is it a one minute? There it was. Holy shit, that was a shaker loose. Right. Yeah, the one minute was nice, man. Dude, that's a riot. That one minute, it dumped down to 3781 and then rocketed to 3830. Well, that was when they released whatever came out this morning. I didn't make up. What yeah, they released? That's news bullshit right there. That one minute. Oh, they like oh. it, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Stick that on the RMLR. You'll see how that one, that one moved. Same candle up and down. Boom, boom. Oh, yeah, both of them probably right. The meaning and everything. Hit the mean and everything. Let's see. Like one mean reversion. I'll give you a mean reversion both ways. Same candle. <laughs> God, you sound like you should be at a circus. That's so funny. Oh yeah. <laughs> Get your caramel popcorn in. Yeah, I know, right? With that voice, man. It's awesome. Oh, Jesus. Look at that. Look at that thing, man. It got outside of the deviation bands for yeah. both of the RMLRs. Pretty crazy. Yeah. And crushed the mean in the middle. In the meantime, it was like, oh, yeah, I have some fun with the mean. Slap it around a little. Here we go. There's a 19. I bet one of these is going to be just fucking perfect. There we go. Yeah, the down selling. Yeah, it's yeah, like nailed it on the outside. Awesome. So we got the four hour minis here. I need that too. Actually, had a little bull div right here. That's why we're getting this little, this little pump. This little pumpy coming out of the hole late last night. Let's see something. Let's put this on them. Whoop. Now, where are you? There they are. I mean, that literally, yeah, and that's right in. It's right in the monthly range. I mean, so Whipping around in there, sixty-eight three Laplace range right here. Went up, rejected off the top side of the sixty-eight three, the tight three range all the way down to the sixty-eight three to the bottom. I mean, look out! This sixty-eight three Laplace range has got the center of that monthly just straddled almost perfectly. Let me see here. So let's see what happens here. We got fifteen minutes. Very interesting. It's the last fifteen minute candle before open. See if these minis can make a run back up here above the 68.3 Laplace. I have a feeling Spy is pulling out of being actually a little bit 39.4 or 79.44, huh? Where is this new daily range going to be? So Spy's going to open up below its new daily range, definitely. Hmm. Yeah, isn't that the daily S1? Just eyeballing yeah. it? 
Oh yeah. 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 It's going to open up. Well, that was yesterday's daily. Right. Right. I see that there. Yep. It stayed above it. It kind of, uh, there's the top of the monthly right there. You got run that or that you drop below on that move down pre-market and it shot right to that uh, resistance level. I think it's the R2, R2 on the weekly. Wait a minute. No, it's our, yep, there's R1. R2. So it's the R2 on the weekly. Then drop right to the daily S1. Yep. It's a thing of beauty, those price magnets. It is. They really return magnets. The price gets yes, definitely. They are the return magnets. Let's see. Things sticking out here. What is Dixie doing, man? Just creeping right now, isn't it? Let's see where it rejected from, man. The weekly range. Let's see here. Hmm. So yesterday, it got back up above this weekly. What is that? S2. So. Yeah, S2 on the weekly. Came back down, tested it again. They stayed above it. it. Did stay above it. Dollar did. Now it's in between these two uh, these two levels from the weekly volatility range. One's flip support again. The other one's still resistance. We're pulled back here. Staying in 68.3 right now. The range has been tested. Hmm. What are you going to do, little dollar? Little crooked, crooked little man. About to find out. Not getting anything from that though. Let me see here. Four hour, four hours cooked. Ninety minutes. Ninety minutes got some hidden or no? It's got some bear div building. Like this little on Bitcoin, man. On bear and trending move. Mm. Wow. Canning spy here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Look at the minis. Their 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 uh, volatility's crashed. Zero right before market open. Total random price action. Predictors on the top side. Um. Was it the four hour? Is it the four yeah. hour? No, that's yeah. a ninety. Ninety minute. The ninety minute. All right. Yeah, fifteen minutes looking good, man. Yeah, we're having an outlier on the 45. The minis are, boom, all the fish are up. Oh, uh, was there a div? No, there wasn't, wasn't any bull div. They're setting up some bear, but yeah, I have a feeling that's going to get blown out. Let me see. Mm. Everybody got kicked out of their positions. It's like, you son of a bitch. Creeping right back up top of that book again. Mm. Outliers though. Outliers 33 to 45. 90 starting. 90 starting. I think the variance was coming down on the four hour negative. Yep. 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 It's amazing that variance, that correlated variance. Get an outlier to the downside. Comes down negatively correlated right there. You get this little bump up on that candle and the correlation breaks. To positively correlated, you get a down candle and right back to negatively correlated coming down, creeping up. That's what volatility and correlation shows you. Beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, man. Looking up here right before, right? Before. Yeah, we're right. Uh, third band again yep. on Bit R and L R on the short third band. Right. Hmm. So now, oh, BTC, no, BTC looking good. Regardless, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is. Uh, oh, it already hit it. All right, it already crushed on the on the long run. Wow, this is a good great. profit area, not financial advice. So Jeez. look out for it. Let me turn off this little. <laughs> That's the second Laplace up. Yeah, I mean, these are, God, is that the 15? Yeah, it's a 15. Yeah, just launching right off the mean. Yeah, pretty much. 
I'd owe 300. It's just been going sideways. Had this nice little freaking clear out here on this 15-minute uh, candle. Crossed everything. Hell, it was on everything. Yeah. Wow, man. I mean, you literally did. Now, I'm not talking about the bands. I'm not talking about the band or the reverse mean, but current candle. And I think they... Did a 99.7 Laplace to the top side and a third standard deviation normal distribution to the downside on that 15 minute candle. Just about. And then RMLR is still repainting, but it's like that band, but it's, uh, it hit it, but then it repainted to go below it, but it, it's right there. Right. Top of that. Right, right by it. Very close. People, people wonder how you get a candle like this, right? I, and I forget what it's called. I, I, Hayabusa or some bullshit. I, mean, I can't remember what the fuck these things are called. But uh, I know majority of them. This one always comes to me. There is a name for this type of game. <laughs> Where you get big wicks on both sides. Right. Well, it's probabilities, man. You can't get a data set down here at the 3SD. 3SD to the top side. Without those things pulling back before, before you get that candle close. <clears throat> I mean, this is going to happen. I mean, probability-wise. It's going to pull back inside, like top side. Let's see, that baby closed the work just barely outside the second SD to the downside. You got past that three SD, so that thing really slung shot back inside. Here's the first standard deviation, it was right at the band, the first standard or the first standard deviation band to the downside of the reverse mean. Crazy little Bitcoin. You see here on the 33. Uh oh, we got a data error. It's all right, it happens. Is that on the 33? But you can see, man, that 33 minute came down with that wick right to the reverse man. Funny, very cool. There we go. Data error gone. Just on the 33. Pretty crazy. And that's pretty cool. <clears throat> we open up this candle, it dumps out. To almost a third standard deviation. That's on a 45 minute. Below the 2 SD band, rips up to mean reversion. Boom, wick right to it. Pulls back. Then we open up above it, get a quick wick down, test the top of the mean. Yep, moving back up. Beautiful. That's why we like this indicator. Gives you a lot of info. Gives you a lot of info. 45, 90 minute, 90 minute, we're going to mean revert, I would not, yeah, another thousand to the top side, what's up there, 20.3, is that where that was at, I mean, obviously, this is 90 minute candles, I'm just looking at what 90 minute is, I'll say, let's go to early after, you know, 21.4, Let's see what we got up here volatility wise. 21 4. Guarantee it's something, and it is a third standard deviation move on the daily. Third standard deviation move on the daily. So we got a 3SD on the daily. There it is right there. 21 4. We are above the mean on the daily. 12 hour. Sorry, I was off for a second. You're saying they, they hit a third standard deviation already on the Bitcoin daily? Um, no, is what I was showing. Okay, so 90 minute. Yeah, it's time. It's time for a little lean reversion. I'm looking out like early afternoon, maybe out here about two o'clock or something. About 21.4. So I took that number back over to the VRE to see on a daily what was up there. There it is, right there. Almost 21, four. 21, 364, a three SD move on the daily. So the 90 minute wants to mean revert today. You're going to see a, you're going to see some nice 15 minute candles here real shortly. Probably if this market wants to pump today, we haven't had a three SD day. Volatility. Sure. looks like it can pump. Let's pump it. Let's pump it. EBR is short, medium and long. I mean, they're all. They're all heading up right now. All right. We opened up my trading account. We'll pump this thing. Ready? One, two, three. Pump it. 
BTC testing the daily range at a wick. I mean, wick right to the bottom of it. But there's nothing to see here. This chart's just random lines. It's really not, guys. I mean, literally, if you're looking at this for the first time, second time, whatever, and you're confused on it, man, stick with us. Stick with it. There's a lot of information on this chart, the way I have this set up. And once you start to understand these volatility ranges and these distribution levels, dude, your whole outlook on trading is going to change, I promise you. You're going to start to realize that all the information you've been looking at for the, all these years, it's all lagging. There's nothing to it. It's just dragging you into the muck. But then you get to indicators where are showing levels, especially dis the distribution levels for the return. The only thing that really matters and that you'll, you, you will not hear other people really talking about it. If there's other people out on YouTube talking about this stuff, I want to know. I want to meet them. I want to talk with them. There's not, though. <laughs> Not that I can find that we all look, I mean, we're all looking all the time. Just I see volatility in the title or something. I'll pop it on and you, you, you get let down 99 point. We're talking about a distribution level of a 99.99999999% you just get let down. You're like, I thought this was about volatility. Next thing you know, they're just fucking off the reservation talking about all kinds of wild shit. Yo, five minute on Biddy is having a nice little outlier. On oh, AV. I bet it is. Above the expanding bands. Bitcoin loves throwing its mighty outlier on those low time frames. Yep. Smacking down. Smacking down those swing traders. Only one way to trade volatility. Yep. We yep. got it nailed down here. Got it nailed down. Low time frames. Take your profit, limit your losses. Now, how do you do that? How in the world are you going to be able to take your profit and limit your losses if you are emotionally attached to your trade? It's not going to happen. You're the the inner critic and just all the voices in your head. You're going to have this battle going on. It's a it's a dead end street. One hundred percent. Gotta know, man. So we're here for to help. At the same time, hey man. People don't want to receive the help. We can lead a horse to water. We can't make them drink of the volatility that is in these markets, that moves these markets. Here comes the open in a minute, less than a minute. Oh, joy. But you start yeah. to understand how to read these charts and the indicators that are based on their returns changes your outlook, changes everything. Start to question your own reality. It's been like... Your whole trading reality that you've been engulfed in for years, you're just like, what the fuck? So, yeah. Pre-market, it did pull back up above yesterday's S1. That's interesting. Okay. So, here we go. We are below the 68. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, we're not. Here's a 68.3 range. Bottom side, that's... <laughs> That's what I was getting at earlier, but I was like, there's not a, there's not enough data. I was going to say the bottom of the 68.3 is probably going to be right at the center of the monthly range. And man, dude, that's a nail. It's right at it. So if this is going to take a quick downturn here real quick, especially it opened up below and look at the bottom of the new daily is right at the R1 of the weekly. And in bull playing out on the one on Bitcoin. That's uh -oh. right. So this is area interest. Maybe the 375 area gets hit early today. It didn't yesterday. I had it coming down there. When I saw the rejection up here, I was like, okay, this baby's going to just make its way down, maybe get a whip to it, and then bounce back up, try to get back up to the 68.3, which it closed inside it. So now you're sandwiched between the middle of the monthly and the daily. Last trading day of the week for traditional markets. I would imagine. Let's take a look here. Spy, kick it up a notch. See what we're doing intraday. How did the daily open though? Variance coming down. That's always good. And it's it's real low. You got the Z score high. There's no bear div though, which is awesome. Here's the bear div, right? The bear divs on the returns oscillator. That baby's trying to turn up. 
a couple fissures down. Okay. Now the intraday time frames. Variance, man. That variance was heading up. Boom, it kicked down. Negatively correlated. I like that. Hidden bull divergence on the four hour. That's the way it opened. Volatility low. Price action coming back up off uh, that trend that hit the second standard deviation band. Pulling back up into randomness. Huh. Look at that. And you definitely have some. Uh, you got bear div. Right, the bear div, but that bear div is also on the returns oscillator. It's hidden bull, and lately, the hidden bull's been been winning. The hidden bull has been playing out. I mean, all you got to do is go look at the price action. You know, this week, just like it's definitely playing out. The hidden bear will just halt halt the uh, or the bear div will halt that price action for a little bit, and that hidden bull just rips it, rip a rip a rip. All right, we got here. Let's see. So that's a four hour. What's a 90 minute telling us? All the variances are down negatively correlated. Look at the bull, look at the bull div on the 90. This thing, I'll tell you what, man. Jesus criminy. Wish I would have looked at that first before here. So this is making sense. This is gonna be the area, right? This 384 area. We get up here to see what's gonna happen. These resistance levels for these macro volatility ranges, man. We can get up above this monthly. We're, it's it's going to do a one SD move up here around 386. If we can, if we can stay above these resistance levels, here's the weekly. Here's the monthly. I mean, this it might be a 95 for Laplace today. We might crack 390. That being said, I mean, and this is what I'm seeing on the indicators today. I mean, these all when you got variants coming down negatively correlated, that thing's usually going to flip up. You're going to get a nice little move. With this bull div, man, that's some highly correlated as well. You can see the blue columns of the correlation. So 45 doing same thing. And the 45 Z score was down in these confidence intervals. And this is the stuff you like. I'm telling you, man, when you get a return, a returns oscillator read like this, look at these bounces off the zero mean setting up all this bull div. At some point, that's going to play out. Usually pretty violently. Usually pretty violently. And so you've got 45, 90, four hour. Those variances were coming down negatively correlated. You drop into the 33, the variance is turning up positively correlated. Just like the 45, it's got all this bull div building. The fissures are all turning up. Volatility is expanding, uh, significantly correlated. But you can see on this 33 minute, we're at the 95 for Laplace current candle. Boom, it's rejecting right there. And I'm going to quit using that word rejecting. It's it's not rejecting, it's math. Yeah. Like, oh, you're just running into a fucking brick wall. The probabilities are you got a 4.6% chance this 33 minute candle is going to close above 382. Exactly. It's like we say sometimes support and resistance. What we really mean are just really. Yeah. That's a little traditional yeah. talk coming out of the math. Exactly. I'm going to. I'm going to get a bar of soap, wash my mouth. Yeah, no, well, I mean, it's okay to say so people understand the concept, but basically, yeah, there's no such thing as really resistance and support. No, there's not. Not in a random market. Yeah. That's why people trading that way just get wrecked time yep. after time after time. Yeah. And then they pin the tail on the donkey one time in a month and make a good trade, and that sucks them in. Oh, my edge is right. good. Right, like, exactly. And my 2% edge. <laughs> Show me your not PNL. quantifiable. <laughs> Show me your PNL. There's only been one person ever to fucking ever do it. Do you remember when Jackie showed his PNL? It was right. like thirty percent. Yeah, I think it was point three eight or something. I was just like, yeah, yeah. You need to go to a psychologist. You right. shouldn't <laughs> be teaching people trading psychology. Are you fucking yeah. kidding me right now? Yeah. And it was just like. Every, there was people in there going, oh, well, that's good. It's just like, yeah. that is not good. You're losing money. How is that good? That's okay, though. We need liquidity. Yep. That's exactly right. We need liquidity. That's why somebody... In and the another thing is, though, even if every single person in retail trading switched over to, to trying to trade VEPs, still 99% of them would fail because they just don't have the wherewithal to do it properly. They'd rather gamble. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, it's totally okay. 
15. Nice. Nice outlier. And the Z score was building up that bull that that uh bull div going into market open. Returns oscillator. Returns oscillator. And that's what like if I see Dr. Grizzly's in here. Yeah. Ved's been with us forever. Good to see him lately. I know you're going through time. Yeah. Yeah. I I I just yeah, man. hey Ved. Good to see you, man. I hope you're hey, bro. You're not alone. You're right, bro. <laughs> yeah. Not hey guys. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, good. Yeah, man. We like it. Good shit. Stay strong, bro. Yep. Um, let's see here. Nah, so, you're gonna see me a lot for sure. Good. Good man. So <clears throat> the 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 key is to start understanding the volatility, but once you stare at these charts for a long time, and that's what people people that know me know. You you come into my place and I People will come over to visit. All my monitors are up. I won't even be trading, but all the charts are up, you know, and you look at people are like, what the hell is all that? And they're like, yeah, <laughs> I don't have time right now <laughs> to drag you into volatility land. But uh, you start to create a workflow like you just like you see me do all the time. I mean, I, I, I can like show people how I do my workflow, but processing that in my brain or are you trying to process it like I process it? It's everybody's going to have a different way. You're going to see things differently. But that's how I usually, that's why my PL when I trade is so high because I use a fucking workflow. And it, we're literally, if I'm working down, and that's what I do. And I'm about there again as soon as I fund these accounts. I'll be up at, who knows, working out too. I'm going to be up at four or five o'clock in the morning, get my workout in, start looking at the charts, right? Start, I want to see how the daily closed, especially on in the traditional markets. And then start, as soon as the market opens, you start working that. You use your workflow, intraday time frame. Because I'm trading down here. I'm getting my entries six minutes and below. Those, those are where my entries are at. In the nine minute, 15, 33, 45, 90, four hour are going to give me bias where to put risk on, where to take risk off. Am I, is all my risk on to the top side or to the downside? Because I'm going to be counter trading too. But when I counter trade that bias, that's when I'm taking risk off. That is one of the keys. That's one of the keys, especially these a lot of the big firms and shit too. Talk about limiting your loss. Not only are you going, if it's a bad trade, you're going to get out quick you've taken almost all your risk off, right? But if you're intraday trading, that's what you're doing. You're trading. You're trying to get in on every move. It doesn't matter what way it's going, but definitely have a bias. Because if that move, especially if there's divergence playing out, is going in that direction, you've got all your risk on, right? All hands on deck. You're over on the VRE. You're looking at distribution levels. You're wondering, you're, you're getting a beat on where to take your profit. Right. And that's where it kind of gets tricky because we know how these low time frames are, especially with Bitcoin. But now traditional markets, I mean, there's volatility everywhere. Pretty insane. is pretty strong right here and right now spy just got above its daily range right 382.17 what we go back over there and i was just talking about how look i mean this is what this this is what these assets can do though i mean this is the the 15 minute candle we're above the 95.4 when's this close five minutes yeah i mean in just the last hour on the 15 minute candle even on bitcoin what do we have like a two and a half percent move up like come on that's you could be done with your day any position size yeah in and exactly. out. yep now go home now go have fun and if this 15 minute candle closes above this 95.4 laplace on that current candle this thing's gonna that this next 15 minute plus right we're above the 95.4 laplace and it's above the top side of the daily range it's at 382.17 
So you're above the 95 for Laplace on that current candle. You're above the top of the daily range. This is setting up. If this closes up here, the next 15 minute candle, it's probably going to immediately shoot to this, this uh, level right here, this monthly volatility level. And that's at 384. You start closing a candle above that, it's going to make a 1SD move, so on and so forth. It's all about level. Notice how on that RE of SPY, on the same 15 minute time frame, you're like right, you're pushing also the third RMLR bands as well. And like, uh, if you look at that chart, the same, the same exact asset, same time frame. It's, it's not a coincidence, right? That it's pushing that RMLR band right when it gets to this area. Uh, I saw that chart in Bilbo. Bilbo. Show. Bilbo, sorry, I have a question. Yeah, what's up? So you said if this line closes, the, I mean, if this candle closes above that uh, red line, it's probably gonna, you know, keep going up. Why would you know that? Or like, how does that work? Exactly. Um, probabilities. Yeah. Even with even with these volatility ranges. So if we're over here. These bands right here, they're going to be the current candle of the Laplace distribution levels. And so we're talking about, and, and, and this volatility looks powerful. Wait a minute real quick. Yeah, I mean, look at this. 80, 80, the volatility on this candle is up at an 80 percentile. Look how the core, look how you got this little expansion here. It was negatively correlated. Then the correlation broke. Wham, you get this big candle. So... When you get a data set on a current candle that closes above a 95.4% level, which that means there's a 95.4% chance it doesn't close above that level. So if it takes the 4.6% probability and does close above it, volatility wise, that's just bullish AF. I mean, yeah. that, that the volatility is powerful. And it's kind of telling you that when, if it does close up there, specifically, you're talking about it's also above the daily range. Like this was yesterday's daily range. Today's, it dropped a little bit, but it's like the bottom side is, I believe, three, yeah, 380.73. The middle's 381.44. Top's 382.17. So not only would this current candle close above that distribution level it also close above this volatility range which is kind of saying okay the bears are chilling man they're letting these bulls close up above this volatility range yeah. it's powerful it, it, it's just all volatility it's kind of showing you that um that that's why the first thing i did i went over i looked at the avr i wanted to see what the volatility was doing and it's it's powerful right now and it only went up to an 80. So that if, this, if it closes right here, you're probably going to see the next 15 minute candle. You'll see that volatility probably go to 100 percentile. And it's positively correlated. So that'll give it the power to make that move. It's just combining the distribution levels, the volatility ranges, and where these 15 minute candles are closing. Why a lot of people, a lot of people like to draw trend lines and stuff on a distribution. Yeah. Right, because that's the only thing that matters. It's the distribution of returns. Price action is just going to follow the returns around. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. They're just putting they're putting all their all their focus on price action when price action itself is lagging. Just like all the indicators built on price action is lagging. When you start to build things on the returns, the whole the whole game changes. Whole game changes. So let's see. We're about about to close. There we go. Close on that 15 minute candle. Yep. And it closed above. And now he said, so now you can see here's the daily range. So that first 15 minute candle of the day shot up right through the daily range. Here's the new 15 minute candle. Boom. So it closed above that level. Now we get the new current candle, right? We're right in the 68.3 Laplace range. The 95.4 on here. 384.5, 384.5, there's 384.4 right at that resistance level. So if this does come down a little bit right here, does it bounce off the top and does this 15 minute candle move? The probabilities are telling me that this is going to make a move up to this area. It doesn't have to, but that's what the probabilities are telling me. Just because of how powerful that last 15 minute candle was, 
but that volatility will continue to expand in that direction. And here we go. So that, that previous one closed at about a 75 percentile. This one right now is at 80 again. I'm telling you, if this thing pushes to 100 percentile, you're going to see that data set up there. It's significantly correlated. Well, it's bouncing back and forth. Yeah. As you can see, so the predictor, the it's entry. almost like it's almost acting almost. like a new support level. Uh, I mean, we we can okay. use those types of words, but when it boils down to it, yeah. it's a level where the probabilities are dictating, where the math is telling you, look, yeah. right, math wise, this is the way we're going. Doesn't have example. We just we just hit that third rmlr up on one of the bands so and if it doesn't touch that band again on the upside then it's very likely in mean reversion mean reversion can happen up down or sideways but it will happen uh and that means that you know you got to monitor the mean to see which direction it's going but like when you have very strong volatility like we have and it does what it just did which is to close above there on that daily range it's it's a very strong indication that you have still some juice left in the tank, especially as the ALR on the 15 minute didn't even hit the third, it didn't close at the third SD dev band above. You can see that on the, on the 15 minute on your chart because you have the ALR. You can yeah. see that it hit above the second band, but didn't hit the third when it closed. And what does that mean? It still has room to run. It's about it doesn't have to run quite as high on this candle as it did before to hit that those targets above but it still has room to run it could even have a higher candle going up on the ALR which, which would be a very powerful move and would put you right about where Bilbo just said before on the target like it's literally about the probabilities and the statistics and that's why it's important to notice where you are along, or where the asset is along its trend or its trending move or its random walk and its volatility levels in order to know what is the likelihood of the current or next move going to be to be you know weak, medium, or strong? And you know, now, and now, win search taking mm -hmm. profit in all this. What? Insert taking profit. Like where? So now, where are you right. thinking? Hey, I'm taking my profit. I already profit. took profit because it hit the third RMLR band. I'm not. I'm not greedy. I don't care if it goes up another few points. Yeah, that's. I, I you can't care. I just oh, don't position when it falls back on the wick, which I did, and that's it. So I'm over here, right, looking at that 15. The volatility is is flat, right? It's not expanding or contracting. And if if this candle on the 15, if this thing were to the volatility starting to drop and it's significantly positively correlated, you're going to see this candle come down. That's just the way the volatility works when you correlate it. But uh, yeah. it's it's starting to build now. It's at an 80. But I dropped down to the nine, the nine minute. See, volatility was expanding, positively correlated. Now look, the nine minutes starting to contract. Yep. So you're getting this nine minute candle down because it's positively correlated. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing. You just got to be aware. Now, if I'm in that quick little scalp on the 15 minute, it's a no brainer. You're, this is what these distribution levels, it's literally telling you. Hey, we're at a 95.4% level. That's a great place to take profit. Yep. You're taking these little scalps. So, yeah, man. Could I let it run higher? Sure, if I was greedy, but I'm not. Perfect. So, that's, okay. what, that's what I wanted you to guys to. Uh, yeah, I'd rather fill up there. more little buckets. Dude, I'd rather fill up more little buckets than try to try to carry one big one. Exactly. That's entire Because every time I close a winning trade, I have more capital to trade with. And my beginning position is anyway bigger. Right? And if I just sit there and let it wait and unrealized profit and loss, then it's useless to me. It's just it's activated capital that's in trade that I can't do anything with until I close the trade. Right. As soon as I close the trade, it's instantly more capital on the next trade. And that's tough. I'm trying to find those little bucket, little bucket yeah. list, little bucket yeah. gift. There is no little yeah. bucket. I know, dude. Trust me, I've been looking for the buckets, man. I got to make some of my own little gifts for those. <laughs> Hilarious. It's like my little stupid analogy. It helps me in my head to imagine my task. It's like I'm filling up little buckets all day. 
Right, right, right. And you can also, you can see, I mean, we're having an outlier on the 15 minute too, on the variant. The returns oscillators turn down. There's no, no bear div. It's turning down on no bear div, but at the same time, the returns are coming down and they're correlated with price action, right? So price action. So is what you want to see here on 15 minute candles is you want to see this correlation dropping if the returns oscillator is going to continue down. And when you see that, right or if it's negatively correlated you can think of it like as a like a we'll use some older terms like a bullish reset right that's what's going on the returns are dropping price action isn't following so the returns are just mean reverting real quick price action price actions hanging up hanging up here pretty much like the returns are like hey you hang there i'll be right back i'm gonna go back to the mean then i'm gonna come and shoot a rocket right up your bum so let's see what happens but it's starting to move up to that area i was talking about Let's see, 76. Let's see if this nine minutes flipping around now. Uh, yeah, you see, it's all about correlation breaks, all about correlation breaks. So that volatility was contracting and it was positively correlated. The correlation broke as it was contracting. <clears throat> now, if you see the correlation break again, positive, and if it's continued to move up, that's because volatility is probably going to come up here back to 100 percentile. It's all about the breaks and correlation. And to get up to that area, what is that, that 384 area or whatever, there's enough room trending-wise on entropy to get there. Now, look. So on the nine-minute, you see how the returns oscillated, right? It turned down. On the nine-minute, it's not correlated to the price action. So if you see this returns oscillator over these next couple nine-minute candles come down to the zero mean and then bounce to the top side and get some blue candles, which I which is probably going to happen. I'm looking at these fissures. Right. And Bill, I got a question for you. I mean, no. here's my question. If you know, I'm sitting here trading in a one minute and a three minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're out here on a 15 minute. And I mean, I appreciate what you did because you actually, I learned a lot from you here just this morning, but <laughs> why wouldn't you have this on like, say a, a nine or six or a three minute, <clears throat> you know, or for, for, I mean, you're always talking about these 15 minute candle closes. Why, why is that? It helps me get my entries down here. It does. Okay. So you're starting at 15 minute because you're trading. If we're trading on lower time frame, you're like, you're starting at 15 minute going down then. Yeah. And it's what I'm doing right here is I, I'm actually like, I sh we should have been doing it back here. Right. When well, we were, we were doing it back there. I mean, I mean, you know, honestly, since we started talking, you know what I mean? So. Um. Yeah. 15 minute is also very good for monitoring trends. I mean, if you notice, but it doesn't have to be 15 minute. It just is a very easy and good yeah. time frame well, for I, monitoring I, trends. It just so much happens in that 15 minutes. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah, it, absolutely. It's, absolutely. Yeah. You got whole little hills going up and down. Right. Sure. And going back to the question, Iskra, not Iskra, or about mentioning about profits, you know, or taking profits. So ever since I started my thing, just to tell you guys, so ever since we got that new PB cone, you can see on that chart I posted up a few minutes ago. So I I had I had a, a sell sig or a sellout at at the weekly, and then just above that you'll see I that probability yeah. cone as above that was my second target. Yeah. So you know what I mean. Now that we can move that to where we want, and I got it set up right, I can actually really actually use this cone now. It's the first time I've been able to use the cone correctly. It's a projection so, boss. I don't know well, what the hell a cone is. That's okay. Boss. Wow. <laughs> it was very aggressive. Damn. Dude. It's an aggressive <laughs> projection boss. Go, Type go A personality. Off, man. All these fucking push-ups. My shoulders wow. are like 5.4% Laplace. Jesus, man. Fucking, <laughs> fucking Wheaties, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I got it. Yeah, you. but anyway. No, I just, this was well explained today. You overnight with your, with your writing, how you're thinking of trades was great. And, and you right here, Bilbo, with this, you know, correlating it down from 15 minutes down. I've actually quite learned quite a lot this morning. So nice job. And also is what I'm doing. I'm not in an active trade, but if I was actively trading, I'm up in these time frames. I'm, I'm, I'm continuing to build my bias because, right, my, guarantee your bias has changed in the middle of an intraday trading session right i mean shit happens so i'm continuously if if i'm down here getting entries on these lower time frames i'm up in here making sure that bias is correct and i have my risk 
my risk is right. Because if that works on me, I've got to flip my risk around. Because we know how these markets are. But this baby is, damn, they're almost going to, is starting to play out. Let's see here. This was, yeah, this is the 15. And when's it close? Four minutes. So my goal for that one was to be up here around 384. What happens? It's trying to make that push. Trying to make that push. And you can see the correlation, because the volatility uh, expanded again, still flat, but it, it did expand again and significantly positively correlated. That's a 338 already. That's not bad. <laughs> to get up there though to get to get this to this in the next few minutes this volatility is going to have to expand it's being held here, there well expanded yeah this is interesting man it's flipping back and forth it's being held though because it's significantly positively correlated and it's freaking not expanding when you get flat volatility and it's positively correlated you're just you're going to drift around Right, it's going to create this little doji. It was what it is doing. About that variance over there on the left, isn't that very yeah. high? Yeah, man. And you're and it's having an outlier. Oh, is it high in general? Well, I mean, no, no I guess not. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But when you yeah. zoom in, it just looks high because it's relative. Yeah, 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 I see it. So then your Z scores all in. Yeah. These are the good moves. These are the oh, outliers. I see. You. These are the great moves. So right, that was deceiving. Insane. So this move is just starting, right? We're at whatever, you know, a little bit under 383 or whatever. But if this mm -hmm. wants to continue and having an outlier, dude, this thing, we could be up at that 390 level. Who the hell knows? And do me a favor, remind me. It's, it's pink with a blue on the outside. That tells you it's possibly correlated. Yep, yep. And having an outlier. When the variance, when the inside line is just white, yeah. it's, just, it just, it's just data spreading or contracting back to the mean. Okay. Either... Either expanding away from the mean or contracting back to it. And, and the pink, outside pink outside on the inside means uh, that there is an outlier, that an we outlier. are having a uh, fat tail event, which right, in thank you. statistics. So this is the color scheme, yeah, because like, everybody calls it differently if they want. Right. The second standard deviation move or more. Let me put this on. Yay. Let me get this. Let me drag and drop this sweet pea. Hold on. Where's my little drag and drop box? There it is. Come here, baby. Get you on the current daily candle. Get you back on the 15 minute. There you are. Like mine positively up positively correlated to the upside is blue on blue. Yeah. So when that thing started having the outlier, it's telling you you're gonna have a 95.4% move or more. Did it happen? Yeah. And we're still up above. That that's the 95.4 four percent level it's not gonna i could put i don't know if i i, don't, I can't throw a pb1 we can't get like a, a future projection but that's right where it's at right and so on the projection you close up above the 95.4 and that's why this is all probabilities that's why these wicks are pulling back down get trying to get back up inside there but you can see with the rmlr that's your projection right there yeah that's a very accurate one if you know how to read the, the direction predictor, right, which is telling you which way it's pretty much going, that thing yeah. is super accurate, especially with the RMLR there. If so you know where the mean is relative to that, and you know where the volatility is relative to that. But he doesn't have, have RMLR over where here, the move is going to move up or down. Like right now, the mean is sloping up, for example, on SPY, right? And if you're looking at Bitcoin now, if you want to switch over to Bitcoin, that's switch even it more. To, switch it to it's, SPY real quick. I don't, I just, oh, yeah. All right. On this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. The rising mean. And that's the 90 minute. Yeah, it's it's uh 90 minute. Spy just hit. It's 95 for Laplace, too. There you go. We got a new it's in mean reversion, by the way. Unless it somehow miraculously closes up at around 385 or higher on this move. It's in mean reversion. So we're going to see the mean probably rise up towards it a little bit and maybe establish a new area there of uh, where the returns are bouncing around Let's see but yeah, over the on, coming over the coming hours so yeah on bitcoin on that 15 minute candle boom yeah 3, 3 sd band or 9, 9, 99 7 laplace move of course yeah. i mean boop coming back right yeah. but now 
Now this is thing. This baby's free. What is that? Twenty point five. Put this back on spy. So there's that area again. Three eighty four point five. Does it do it now? Good. Look at the volatility. Now it's ramping up. Three consecutive candles. Right. The outlier is still going. Still going strong. Returns oscillator telling you returns are moving down. Price action's not following. It's got a negative candle now. And all the fissures are still very strong. Look at that. And Fisher just takes price action, finishes it off in a normal distribution. That's why we use it. It's giving you a read. I like it a lot. There's room on entropy on the 15 to move up there. But at the same time, come over here. We're dealing. I mean, there's a. Th th this is powerful right here, man. This 384.5 area. Man. That's on. Yeah. Very powerful. And then you got the one SD up here. Yeah. But I do believe this week's going to finish strong, man. I've had a good week. I've had a good week in the markets all around. Except, yeah. except gold and silver. Sorry. Sorry, all right. you metal hounds. <sighs> Just extra weight. And Talk about the, heavy bags. Talk about heavy right. bags. They're actually really heavy bags. They are. Did you see yeah. that they're there's buying like so they're so short supplied silver that they're paying ten dollars more for a coin right now. So if you have a one ounce coin, yeah, put them in the, in the bathroom with you. I mean, metal was such a scam anyway. Did I say I, scam? I meant, uh, I meant they're uh, just uh, overinflated nonsense because they're basically paper notes. They say that they are, those paper notes are equivalent to actual ounces of metal. But who knows if it's actually accurate? Probably not. Right. Like, there's no way to actually measure exactly what's in the stores. What's in and the reserves. This level right here on the daily, that is actually pretty tight compared to the downside. You just fell off Bitcoin. Yeah, this thing's falling off too. It's insane. So, yeah, man. That's why. That's why we baby. trade time frames. That's why we trade low time frames. We are getting in and out of positions quick. And on this projection, on this 15, can see all right that last candle closed back inside to 95.4 next you open up you get a wick right to it now it's coming back down does it mean revert on the projection it could and and like when i was talking about before that this was likely going to happen it doesn't have to that's why you continue to watch the volatility and and the volatility stayed expanded the correlation broke now it's heading now it's sloping negative so you're yep. getting this candle down so that's why Bitcoin. I mean, these things are so correlated, it's hilarious. All right. And then meanwhile, people are trying to swing trade this shit. <laughs> I mean, swing what trade. holy shit. Good luck. Good luck. They're trying to swing trade it and they're in they're literally putting stop losses in the system where where the exchange can see where your stop is at. Right? And where they have active traders trading against their own customers. And then you get all that degen activity or people are using a shitload of leverage. Dude, that's when you get that's when you get that kind of shit. The, the, those crazy looking wicks and where's Bitcoin at, man? Right. Well, you literally have people at the exchanges sure. and big ass whales and HFT firms and things <laughs> moving the returns along to where yeah. the liquidity is. Like if you look at these moves, right, from, from this down move, so overnight. That's 0400. Oh, overnight, people are, get, are trying to get into a position, whether it long or short. Let me put a vertical. Let me put a couple horizontals. Whoa. What the hell? Oh, that, uh, oh, that's a damn ray. What the hell am I doing? I don't know. What are you doing, sir? Horizontal line. That's what I'm looking for, Chief. So we get that wick. Wow, man, really? Three? Let me put that on one. So look at that. So if people are getting entries from here to here, 
and they're putting stop losses in the system. You, both sides got a little wrecked. Yeah. Probably got knocked out because these people are using like data sets and shit for re, uh, for support for or, I mean for stop losses. And they're using like 10x and 12x and 20x leverage. Yeah, and this is what happens. Zip zip, knocks all them out, and then look. Whoop. So if you were long back here and this wick knocked you out right now, you're just like oh, manipulation. You made me really. And you're crying because you don't know how to read the market. It's okay. And Some the things the ones that think they're outsmarting the markets are the ones running trades on like seven X. They're like, oh, it's only seven X. It won't get me. Trust me, it sees your entry too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, it does. They're all over it. Yeah. There are people. Sam has got people. <laughs> people think, oh, my position's so small. They're not coming from my liquidity. No, they are. They definitely are. <laughs> yeah. It adds up. Hundred dollars risk on, or a hundred million dollars risk on. You're on that level. They're coming to get you. For sure. For sure, indeed. Man, God, that hour went quick. What the hell is happening here? We're in a time warp. We're in a volatility time warp. It's a beautiful thing, man. All the leaves are falling. I got so much work. <laughs> it was a very good hour. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Pretty good. That move kind of pooped out for right now, but like Yashi said, I mean, if if I if I if I was scalping down here, let's see, let's put this baby on the three minute. Yeah, I mean, this thing's a mean reversion. Like, yeah, I mean, this you know. starts, and you're in this little scalp, and you see that volatility. That volatility yeah. is telling me, well, it's definitely going to the top of the daily. So, where am I going to take my profit? Probably right there. Yep. Like a little quick couple point move, three points or something. Boom, boom, boom. Right there. Bam. Now, could you got a little more juice out of it? Yeah. But this move ain't over. But your weekly is above the above it, right? Now where the, the diamond is? Where's your weekly at? Right uh, there, right? That's, that's the month. That's, that's the where monthly. I've been having Cause trouble. Because the, the minis, the minis, my my weekly was right that, you know, like I get my, my weekly on the minis was 38, 31. And that's what was that was my first target. Yeah, let me put them put it on the minis. See that 3831? Boom. Right. Right. And then you have, I think, what is it? What is what is the last blue line it went through? What's that up there? Boom. That is the four hour 2SD. Second okay. standard. What is that? 3833. I had a Laplace at 3830 or 25. All right. And then I had a cone going out based off of, you know, probably the, the low of the morning or the overnight. Oh, what? You had a what? Oh, damn it. Aggressive PB <laughs> projection boss. What the fuck? <laughs> you know what I meant? So the very low of the oh, night, yeah. right there around 3.30. Well, I guess that'd be around 4 o'clock where I based it off. Right. I like right. it. Yeah, go have another bowl of ladies, man. I mean, you want to talk about probabilities. Just look at how the Bitcoin... Dumped from hitting that third S, that third RMLR top side, right? Just because it's like, well, mean time to engage mean reversion. <laughs> what, 15 minutes. 15, 15 minutes. Get some of that good love. Look at that. It smashed the third Laplace, which was also right underneath the RMLRs. Yeah. I mean, from there, it's like you have a very high probability of seeing the price remain at you know within this level, and even re and doing mean reversion from this point, and it is doing mean reversion slightly downward as as the mean continues to rise, even right to slope up. So, just like we were talking about 15, 20 minutes ago, that's what's happening. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean that that. That 15 minute candle on Bitcoin, man, outside the 917, then boop, fire coming back down. Yep. That's the that good take profit price area. That was it when somebody asked me earlier. Like, I was already out of profit. You know, I was already out of the move. It's like, I, again, I don't care if it goes up a bit more. It's going to hit me in reversion. You know, it went up maybe a few bucks or whatever. <laughs> it's it's hit me five minutes. It's a no brainer. This thing starts climbing. Look at this 45 minute candle. It went right to the 3 SD band pulled back and it's above the the third standard deviation now where's it at inside the first standard deviation there's a 68.3 percent chance that would happen so yeah 
And there's Which the is still the preponderance of chances. Like that is still the majority, the overwhelming majority. It's sixty-eight point three percent. Like you can, t- if you run these trades right, you take profits at the first standard deviation. You really don't need to be greedy. It's just that in crypto and in other volatile assets, we do often see second and third standard deviations get hit. But you do not need to wait for that if you have the right position size on whatever asset you're trading. Yeah, like what he said. <laughs> That's right. Dixie up a little bit. Let me do a quick quick little sweep. Dogecoin, we go die somewhere. Fuck, it's up yeah. 8% today. Yeah, the, dude. The kids, meme they coin. Meme coin. Give me the meme coin. Give me the meme coin. Fun. Go look at meme coin. Well, that's because they probably think uh, it's going to be integrated into Twitter or something. Yeah, oh, right? Yeah, I can see something like that. Yeah. That's well said there, MJ. I can yeah. see that. Yeah, good, a good observation right there. What the fuck? Look at Doge. That's on the four hour. Oh, it's back to eight cents. No shit. I didn't know that. Fuck yeah, this. dude. Yeah, just, just getting excited about Elon Musk <laughs> taking yeah, over. Yeah, it's got to be, man. But it's still, percentage-wise, that's a great move. Look at this. No, I mean, it's, it's moving on Bitcoin. Like, there's no surprise there. <laughs> this is so far. I mean, this is, da- this is the daily Dogecoin. Opens up, dumps down to the 2SD, then rips up to the 3SD. <laughs> right. oh. No, but per- percentage-wise, to uh, P-Funk's point, it's it's a probably a better percentage on Doge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Because when you have, ENT, low, you have such a low asset price, it's yeah. easy to move yeah. higher percentages. Oh. I mean, your ENT indicator had the predictor went blue. That's fuck, man. Nice. God, the daily. If I'd have only top. stuck with Dogecoin from the moment I found out about crypto, I could be a hey, multi, multi, multi right. millionaire. I, I, I wouldn't have had to learn any of this. I didn't have to How trade. Much? Now that I could have just bought Dogecoin. What was the price? <laughs> of the yeah. Time? Dude, it was there point you, zero zero six. There's the two day, two day two open. Zero zero six. Down to the one oh, SD, no. then pumps up to the two SD. Doge on the two day, rejected perfectly off the two SD. You know, a little blue dot going. Hey, come to Papa, come to Papa, baby. So emblematic of crypto. Day? I mean, you got you've got a you've got a coin that was made as a joke. It had at one yeah. point it had uh, two devs working on it. Okay. Yeah. Elon Musk yeah. gets involved, pumps the thing to seventy cents. I mean, it's it's just yeah. it's the, it's the story of crypto, Dogecoin. Yeah. It really did. Penny stock, same thing. I had a few penny stocks do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Biggest True. mistake I ever made on one. I had a hundred thousand shares of a of a stock that I bought at around eleven cents, and two days later mm-hmm. it went to a dollar. I sold it all. It was a Friday afternoon. Sold it on that Friday afternoon. I walked. I walked in on Monday morning. It was trading six dollars higher. Fuck! I left five hundred grand on the fucking table, man. Oh, was, yeah. shit! In two days, talk about a stew nod. What do you get? It could have, should have, would have, right there, man. Yeah, but you had profit, man. So I okay. had profit. I thought I was a hero at a, at a dollar. Are you kidding me? Right. <laughs> I was a hero. <laughs> oh, my God. I bought this 11 cents two days ago. It's a dollar. What do I do? You don't give a shit. You don't yeah, give a shit. No, I know. Trust me, I bought, I bought a house now. with it, so it was great back then. Yeah. Anyway, all good. Well, thanks for everything this morning, gentlemen. Yeah. You know, let's and get out of have to something, in, something happens this weekend and get back on chat, but yeah, I don't know. Absolutely. Weekends have been pretty dead. See you though. All right, guys. Good stream. Yeah, Talk about it. Yep. See you.